Just about a month ago, Microsoft went against its official decision to end support for Windows XP, and released a patch to help stop the spread of the ransomware WannaCrypt. Kind of a strange move, considering it's the first update to the OS in over three years, but certainly admirable in that they could have easily not made a patch at all and left many computers vulnerable. Security patches are nothing new, even to an OS as old as XP, but they're essential in ensuring that with each new round of exploits, operating systems remain stable and safe to use. Just like the OS is used today, Windows XP had its fair share of exploits, and in 2004, some of the most notable ones were worms like Blaster and Sasser, which were able to spread across a network by making a buffer exploit in the Windows Remote Procedure Call, essentially allowing it to invisibly and automatically copy itself into any compromised computer. Since its release, XP has had some rather glaring security holes. In its original version, it didn't even have the firewall enabled. And with these new uncontrollable rapidly spreading worms, it was clear that Microsoft needed to act quickly to ensure that the growing number of computers running XP weren't going to be one silent infection away from being useless. And so, work began on patching up XP's security flaws. The real problem with Microsoft's plan for the update was that originally they were only going to enable the firewall, which would certainly stop some of the exploits, but at the same time, as compatibility testing had shown, would cause more problems than it solved. Noticing that the issue was going to require much more time and care, Todd Wang, the manager of the project, sent out for employees to submit security features they wanted to include in the update. The meeting room was packed, and so many ideas were submitted that it was eventually decided that the little update was about to become a major improvement for the Windows operating system. Windows XP Service Pack 2. Activating the firewall turned out to be only one of the many features added to improve system security in SP2. Some others were improved support for Bluetooth, a safer Internet Explorer with a new pop-up logger, and probably the least noticeable but certainly the coolest, support for the no-execute flag, which on processors that made use of it could stop buffer overflow attacks, which try to write executable code into the memory to trick the computer into running it, by adding preventative measures right into the computer hardware. Naturally, implementing all of these improvements did far worse than simply cause a few system instabilities. During development, there were times when application compatibility was near zero, and the process of patching all these bugs became a laborious task. Care was still taken though to make sure that the actual sources of the problems were being repaired instead of just the individual conflicting programs. After all, a quick fix for one program might have solved the observable problem, but it was more than likely that other untested applications could have broken in a similar way and not had a patch. Even though the goal of this patching was to solve the direct causes of issues rather than individual applications, not all shims during the development process proved to be as wise. Team member even called one of the weaker shims, putting red lipstick on a chicken. In typical Microsoft in-joke fashion, this made its way onto a t-shirt with the top 10 sayings of Windows XP SP2. My personal favorite is this one. Words to live by. In some cases, the easiest solution to incompatibilities turned out to be just introducing a replacement program in place of the one that was broken, which is why Windows Media Player 9 and Windows Movie Maker 2.1, seemingly irrelevant programs, made their way into the pack. As development came to a close, only about 8 well-spent months behind its original schedule, fear began to rise over how well Service Pack 2 would work upon release. It's always possible for an update to break another program simply because part of the system that the program relied on gets changed by the update, and with one as complex and as far-reaching as SP2, it seemed inevitable. In preparation, Microsoft increased its number of customer support workers to handle the massive amount of angry calls they expected from any major update. Remarkably though, the calls never came. Sure, some people called in, but even most of them were asking questions about SP2 more than reporting bugs. Not only did the update solve many of the security problems that Windows XP had, making it a much safer operating system, but it also didn't cause many new problems in the process. This incredible success of SP2 was mostly a result of the careful development process taken with the project, plenty of advanced warnings surrounding the update, and the massive number of beta testers. Of the few problems that did arise, one was caused by an obscure adware program called TV Media which would blue screen the installer. A more understandable mistake considering people who volunteer for beta testing aren't as likely to have malware on their computers. Microsoft has released plenty of other service packs before and after SP2, but this one still remains probably the most important one to date, for ensuring that XP was a much safer and secure operating system. What makes it even more impressive is the fact that it grew from a simple patch all the way to a major system update, and after such a messy development cycle had an incredibly smooth release. After all, the best kind of patches are the ones you don't even notice.